Good day, everybody. My topic is about change in physical properties of puddle soil and the effect on mountain yield. I would like to present my topic on several stage introduction, the objective, methodology, result, and then the conclusion. So, what is puddling? In lowland rice based cropping system, especially in Asia, puddling is a must. It's a tradition. Before establishing rice, the field is puddled. So the farmer puddled the soil. Puddling involves saturating the soil with water and then plowing and tilling it until it becomes muddy soil. It requires an input of mechanical energy from a draft animal or hand tractors. So puddling destroys the soil structures as a consequence, uh, will affect the performance of legume crops planted after the rice harvest. But the result of the research from several authors is unclear about these uh, issues. That's why the research uh, is aimed at investigating some changes on physical properties of soil during rice growth, suspended soil mass, suspended soil dispersion, soil profile and strength development, and then trying to determine the effect of padding on growth and yield of mangrove planted after rice. The methodology we employed in this research is we use a controlled temperature glass house at 25 degrees Celsius experiment at three or using three uh, different textures of soil, which are gray clay, silty clay loam and sandy loam. The soil to depth of 10 cm was puddled using a level 3 puddler fitted with two rods. The total energy applied to the rice bed of 1 square meter was estimated to be 250 joule. This amount of energy is equivalent to about 7 kilojoule square meters. Five inoculated mung bean seeds were sown into dibbling holes of 4 cm deep with a hill spacing of 20 to 20 cm. We measured several uh, physical properties of soil during this experiment, such as suspended soil mass, soil dispersion. The soil water status was measured at 0 to 1, 1 to 3, 3 to 5, and 5 to 8 centimeter depth during sowing crop establishment and harvest phase. During the first week after drainage, this measurement was taken every second day. Time interval will then increase to two measurements per week at Mount Bean Harbors. A remit constant speed penetrometer was used in this experiment to measure cone index to depth of 45 cm in 2.5 interval. The, penetra the penetrometer reading was taken at 1.7 and sorry, we took the reading at 1 day, 7 days, and 14 days after parting treatment. The plant measurement taken were plant height at 7 interval, relative leaf water content at 48, 50, and 56 days after sowing, and then the grain yield total biomass production. So the result, the first result is defect of funding, defect of puddling on suspended soil mass. We find out that in clay soil and silty clay loam, the difference between puddling and no puddling treatment were large, whereas in sandy loam, there was no significant difference, probably because the small amount of fine particle present in the soil. This result is similar to those observed previously by Kirchhoff and So and by Bhakti 96, Bhakti 98. Secondly, the effect of puddling on soil dispersion. It's obvious from the graph that increased puddling energy applied results in greater clay or silt plus clay dispersion. Thirdly, change in dispersible silt clay as influenced by puddling intensity. Increased puddling energy applied results in greater silt and clay dispersion. That's the graph tell us. Puddling increased dispersion, particularly on clay soil. The breakdown of puddle soil into 20 micro particles was faster than two micron particle. Decrease in hydraulic conductivity is largely associated with increased dispersion. So the relationship can be explained by uh, negative uh, linear relationship for the two soil we measure.
The fourth result is mung bean establishment and seedling weight at 14 days after sowing. Differences between parting and unparting were very, very small. However, crop establishment was increased by 3.7% in clay soil without parting. Intense soil parting may have deteriorated soil structure further, hindering seedling emergence and subsequent crop establishment. This indicated that for clay soil, like GCG soil in this case, lower parting intensity may be of beneficial for legume establishment. The fifth result, mung bean hay at different period after sowing as affected by parling. The growth of mung bean was evaluated at uh, different days after sowing. Plant hay was not, significant, was not significantly affected by soil type and soil parling during three weeks of growth. But parling reduced plant hay significantly after 28 days growing. In clay soil, plant head were very much similar with or without parley. Plant head was shorter by 6.9% and 13.8% for silty loam and sandy loam, respectively, if puddle. In clay soil, however, plant head was very much similar with or without parley. The next result, relatively water content at different period of the sowing. Here, at 50 days after sowing, relatively water content was higher in silty loam, which are 6.9.99 followed by clay and sandy loam, which were 60.93 and 58.42 respectively. This was probably because in sandy loam, plant available water was depleted faster due to high growth rates of mangroves compared to clay soil and silty loam. The seven uh, finding we look at total biomass production, weight of pots, and granule. Total biomass production was not affected by soil type and soil partly. The sandy loam had the highest total biomass, whereas the clay soil produced the lowest one. Weight of pot and grain yield were not affected by soil type and soil puddling. Now, we look at the water profiles of the three soil, how the puddling affect that water profile. Here, it can be seen that the pattern of water profile from the sowing establishment and hopper space in the Swiss soil was very, very similar. Now the soil strength of the Swiss soil was significant difference in soil strength between puddle and non puddle treatment were observed in the Swiss soil. In silty loam, soil puddling increased soil strength. When the soil dry at 14 days after sowing or crop establishment, soil strength increased significantly. Similarly, a significant difference in soil strength was observed between puddle and non-puddle treatment in sandy loam. This is consistent with other uh, authors like Cliff Chop 94, Kumar et al. 71. Results show that soil strength increased with decrease in moisture content. Puddling in lowland rice base cropping system affects soil strength significantly. So, we can draw a conclusion from this research. Firstly, traditional wet tillage of puddling in lowland rice based cropping system change the soil physical properties. Soil puddling increased dispersion, but dispersion decreased with time of inundation, resulting in decreased percolation rate. Next one. Establishment percentage and yield of mung bean were not affected by puddling. In lighter Texas soil, puddling is necessary to reduce percolation rate and to ensure that submit condition can be maintained for the benefit of rice growth. On the heavier textured soil, on the other hand, puddling is not necessary, thus may save a significant energy to the farmers. The implication of the research, I think I'm very confident that puddling should be minimized where lowland rice is followed by a drought 